What's up guys, Kevin from Junkyard Digs here today. Quick message before today's video, we are still in the process of finishing our new shop, which means all of our resources have been allocated to this and finishing that blooper last week put us a week behind, which means I'm gonna have to go away from the car content for a little bit to get you guys a video this week. On top of that, it is literally negative eight degrees outside right now, so doing the outdoor car stuff is a little difficult. So because of that, we are going to finish a revival I started in August, many, many months ago, and finish it this week on the channel. I'm gonna warn you right now, this video is a bit of a mess because there's a lot going on, a lot of still trying to like figure out stuff in the shop and stuff and moving out of the old shop. It's, it's just a bit of a hectic time, unfortunately. But don't worry, we're gonna be getting back to car content soon. Just gotta get everything over here wrapped up and back on track. All right, let's begin. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another strange episode of Junkyard Digs. We're switching things up a little bit here today. We've done car revivals. We've done three-wheeler revivals. One thing I have not seen anyone do is... A plow revival. No, it's not. It's a snowmobile revival. Ha, ha, ha. So straight away, I want to say thank you to my buddy Jed from Central Iowa Diesel Performance here in Ames for giving us the lead on this sucker, which is sitting here in his shed. This has not run for at least 20 years from what I've heard, which usually for snowmobiles is detrimental. They're all froze up because they're two strokes. They're similar metals, this and that, not sitting in oil in the bottom, they die. But in this thing's case, that's not an issue. Let me show you why. Before you say it, no, it's not the beautiful cheetah print seat that'll keep this snowmobile alive. It's what's under the hood. That right there is a 303cc rotary. This engine's built by a German company called Sox. They were common in the Arctic Cat Panthers. They had a 303 and a 606, which I think was a twin rotor. Correct me if I'm wrong. They were also in another name I can't pronounce. It starts with an A. Johnson and Edmund also ran rotary snowmobile engines back in the day, but they were not socks. They were their own American brand. So with that being said, as you can see, this thing totally turns over and totally sounds like it has compression. Wow, the carburetor's not even stuffed. I'm gonna apologize for totally drinking a monster during this video. Uh, school's back in session. I don't sleep anymore, so I'm back on the juice. <laughs> So yeah, let's get this sucker dug out of the shed. We're gonna take it over to the shop, it's a couple blocks away, and work on it there so we're not doing it in this poor lighting. Do you know anything about rotaries? It's a Dorito. <laughs> it's got a Dorito inside. This thing is to be called the Dorito. Let's just take a moment to appreciate this barn. It is like straight up time capsule from the 50s. Like, look at all this cool stuff on the walls. Like all these chairs, the world's largest bottle cap right here. This giant stationary power plant. Like this is the largest single cylinder I think I've ever seen that's not like in a tractor or something. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and say she's stuck out. Oh dude, look! Look at the shelf. I think that's an old Maytag. Let's go check it out. Yeah, it's a Maytag, look at that. Oh, it's a two cylinder. I bet that sucker would run. I don't know. Would you guys want to see a revival video on stuff like this? All right, let's get this sucker out of here. Yeah, it's heavy. Of course. It looks light. It is not light. <laughs> there we go, it's a 71. Um, and bingo. Last tag is a Minnesota tag for 75 to 78. So I would say we could safely say it's been parked since the early 80s, late 70s. Well, what do you say we go get it washed up? Okay, we're done. 
let's go home. Cleaned up pretty darn nice. I'll get some cleaners and hit the seat and get the rest of the grease and stuff off. But this is a really good machine. Ooh, look, a hat and poop. Good. I was starting to think there's going to be no poop. So one of our first things we need to do to make anything operational here is get this belt realigned. Right now he's somehow way off on this side of this clutch. I, I don't even know how that happens. I don't even know how to get it back. Bang. All right, belt's back on. Sweet. Man, that thing is a sucker to spin over. Time for a key and then some fuel and see what happens. Unplug our old key. Plug our new universal key in. This one has a start function, so there's an extra pin. Pop our spark plug lead off. Pull the spark plug out so we can spin it over easy. And then see if she's got any spark. I think it just looks like a giant AC motor. Like if I didn't know better, if this was not here, and you just put some wires here, I'd be like, whoa, an electric snowmobile. Spark plug looks good. Oh, just in time. John's here. Well, hey. Oh, hey, how are you now, bud? How convenient. We're just about to check for spark. Oh, okay. You want to hold that spark plug and hold on to the motor? Oh, yeah, I want to I wanna get shocked as, as much as I possibly can. Got spark. Does it really? Yeah. Spark. Okay, well, I guess we just throw this back in and shoot some carb cleaner and WD-40 in there because, you know, two-stroke stuff. <laughs> and then pull the cord and it runs. Uh oh. The, uh, the spark plug is currently just spinning. This ain't yield good. Oh, that's weird, that's dude. Strange. <laughs> so that looks like helicoil material right there. Well, this just turned into a longer video. Yes. <laughs> Alright. Now that we put our belt back on, it's immediately back off. We're going to actually pull this engine out to put a helicoil in it because then we can flip it upside down because there's no oil or anything and just with the air gun and get all the metal out of the combustion chamber. Done. Okay. All right. Ta-da. So, we tried a longer spark plug. To see if we catch some threads that that really shallow one doesn't touch. Well, we could, but spun it over and the rotor, thankfully not the ceiling part, but the rotor itself came in contact and bent up this uh, electrode probe thing. So knowing that, at our highest point, we are that deep, which means I got about another quarter, half inch past there, which should give me enough room to get this fat part of the helicoil all the way in there without touching the rotor. It's usually when you helicoil something, you put the piston all the way down and you got three, four inches to work with. Not on this. So we're going to run this down to the deepest looking point, right about there. And we're going to give her our best. And if she starts to touch, we stop and we have to pull the motor apart and get the rotor out of the way. Then we can just zinc and it's helicoil. The hardest part about a helicoil, which is the most important part, is usually you have damaged threads when you do this so you have to make sure it goes in straight or you're gonna have an offset spark plug that will never seal some people like to hug trees i like hugging engines so clear yeah still clear 
Okay, let's take a look at that. I think that's deep enough by now. Okay, how deep are we? Oh, we're only two thirds of the way. This is why helicoils coils are sketchy. That's a lot of metal, that's fine. Activate magnet. The engine's made out of metal. So it shouldn't, it shouldn't care. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> wow. That is, <laughs> that is a lot of metal chips. That's bad. It's no good. Well, I think we're good. There's a thousand pounds of metal inside this engine. But we are to here on the tap and it just touched the rotor. John would sit here and spin it a little bit as you saw and feel for it. And we felt the slightest little tap and it got hard to turn and we stopped. And we checked and we're deep enough. So now all we have to do is spend a bunch of time getting all that out of there and then we're good to go. Okay, one last step. Smack the shit out of it. I think that means it's set. All right. Our Dorito birthday cake is ready to go back in. I'm just gonna put it back in. It weighs like, I don't know. What do you think this weighs, like 35 pounds? 40? Yeah, 35. Oh, she's in. Ta-da, done. She's in. All right, four bolts. All right, there's an engine. Gave her a little bit of fuel. Oh, oh is that something? Can't tell. Oh, hey, oh, that was something. snowmobiles through and through. I thought the rotor was going to be an awesome idea and whatnot, make a cool go-kart or something. Turns out they're trash and they don't run. You know what? One thing about snowmobiles in the winter, trying to get them started, if you get hot like this, it's always cool. You just take your coat off, right? Because it's like negative 14 degrees outside. It's 98 today. 10 o'clock at night, it's still 98. It's hot. I hate snowmobiles. John's made one last desperate attempt. Oh yeah. Where I've already given up. He's sprayed fuel directly into the cylinder. And he's gonna run the plug back in. Oh. What? Oh! Uh, uh, damn uh, it! I'm a smart man. Well, it helps if you plug the smart plug in. <laughs> Dedication. That's what we do here. <laughs> it sucked the entire air filter into the carburetor. So we're going to take the whole carburetor assembly off. Oh, it did? Yeah. Oh. We're going to get rid of that. Uh-oh. And just dump fuel right in the crankcase. Uh-oh. Uh, Those are the ones yep. that drive the track, yep. right? So this is what drives the track. So what happens is over time this crystallizes. And you can break it off with your finger now. And that is not ideal when this is supposed to run at, you know, 35, at least 35 miles an hour. If you're going to run this machine, you got to get a new one of this. Yeah, it's not ideal. They went shooting out. Yeah, they went shooting out of the machine. That's awesome. 
All right, insert gasoline. That should be funny. I'm going to be the throttle to keep it from going meow out the door. Hang on, let's point it between all the trucks. Oh, oh. We'll be like, okay, it's January. Ugh. Holy hell, it's cold out there. All right. Many, many months have passed since that last scene where John and I were working on the old Arctic Cat in the shed. It's now February? February. February. There's about eight inches of snow outside, and we are back with the Arctic Cat. We're going to hopefully get this carburetor rebuilt, and put some new drive cogs in, figure out a fuel system, and take this sucker for a ride for the first time in I forgot how many years. All right, so today, like I mentioned, we're with my buddy John from Golden Roster Bus, and our buddy Angus from Wackett Garage. A couple of smaller YouTube channels, you guys can check them out. There's links down in the description. They make some good stuff. Do you have any idea where we left off? We got a run in, and I think what we found out is the cogs crystallized, and so they just broke apart, which is common with these old girls. So we're gonna have to go through the chain case and take off the sprockets, hopefully not destroy the bearings. John's gonna be tackling everything in the track. I'm gonna be doing some stuff up front. We've got this nice Tillotson carb. I've got a rebuild kit and an ultrasonic cleaner. Not the, not the jackhammer, the thing next to it. I don't think you can use a jackhammer to clean a carburetor. I bet you could. <laughs> you could do it. Angus could find a way. Well, yeah, you drilled yours out, so... Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's get to work. Alright, John, what are we looking at down here? Alright, so what we're looking at is up oh. there. <laughs> yeah, so those are supposed to be cog wheels, and they are non-existent, so... Dude, they completely shredded. Oh, they're obliterated. The only thing that would have spun this track was those rollers. And not only that, but you're, uh... The high fax slides. Yeah, your high fax slides are the same way. That's ah, you that's don't something. need those. Ouch. I'll uh I'll let you start digging in to get this track out of here. Alrighty. I'm gonna take that car over there and rebuild it. Wanna race? <laughs> You'd win for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Got Tang Tools out here on the job today, helping us in the new shop. Uh, you're about to pull the very first tool from the box to be used on. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is our brand new 53 inch toolbox from Tang Tools USA. If you guys would like to see some of the tools they have to offer, check out TangToolsUSA.com. Let's see how stuck these guys are. Oh, well. Don't that's, why you, that's why you get a goddamn uh, Polaris and not an Articat. <laughs> oh, wow. Right Arctic cats just right? require those nicer set of tools since they're such a refined machine. Yeah, well, I can't afford that, so. <laughs> oh, not stuck. Unless it's spinning on the other side, which I hope not. Oh no, she's coming out. That's nuts. Yep. I've got our carburetor off. Your carburetor. I've got the track out. John has the track dropped. What are we looking at here, John? Oh, well, oh, there's the suspension. Wow, okay. Oh, he just disemboweled it. <laughs> oh my god. I am the god of snowmobiles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is what's left of your snow. Oh, oh. I'm sure they'll ride just Are you saying that's what the uh, cogs did? Yeah, this is exactly what the cogs did. Did they spin? Oh, they're a little crispy. 
They spin though, not freely. They're gonna need some WD-40. Yeah, oops. Oh, she's bent. We're gonna have to get some emery cloth and put an emery cloth around that so it doesn't tear the seal out on that. Deal. If you ever buy a vintage snowmobile, and even if it does run, make sure you go through your chain case. Because if you don't, and there's no oil in there, sometimes these machines run this material on the inside that tensions that chain. So if you run it without oil, tear them up, you'll have to get new ones and your machine won't run as long. So, fun fact. Does this one have oil? I, I, I do not think so. She's looking kind of dry. Oh, that should be way more full than that. <laughs> Yeah, I, that's empty. Yeah, <laughs> There's I mean not you a should drip of oil in that. Yeah, I mean it should at least be filled up till it's running out the bottom here. They don't take much. They don't take much. So they, they don't take, take none. Yeah, they don't take none. <laughs> they don't take much and they don't take none. All right, let's see if we can save that seal. Oh, seal. dude, oh, beautiful. Mint. Oh, there is a little oil in there. Was there really? Oh yeah. Oh, a little as in eight drops. <laughs> oh, she, she ain't have bad. Oh, not 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 too bad. He put an amount in his mouth. Oh, uh, it's all good. Like I've seen Derek do it just get the, like for the video, but this dude just like drank oil. He's my hero. That is amazing. That never happens. They're always seized in these things, and you gotta bang them out, and it what? sucks. So this moves freely inside of that tube. So then when it bounces, it, it like doesn't, cause like this is your suspension right here. Okay. Yeah. It's, oh, that moves too. Yeah, so this wow. is this is where your bolts go in. Okay. And, and mount shot. it to the hull. Why hello, oh, doggy. Bailey, hi. <laughs> She's stuck, yeah. How's it going? Good, Kevin, how are you doing? Not too bad. Ooh, this is a, oh, yeah. Panther. Yeah. Wankle. Ladies and gentlemen, my cousin Ben. And his I dog, Bailey. Hi, how you doing? Baby, how are you? Good. Hi. Right. Who's a good girl? John has all of the gearing off. He's going to pop this shaft out to drop our drives out of there. And then we'll grease up the skid. Let's get everything strategy. good here once we replace the clogs, cogs, whatever. Yeah, so this one's free. This one is not. So we're going to have to bang that one out. So I've been looking under here. And I think I agree with Kevin. Like, it's it's really clean under here. Like, there's paint still on the what covers up the cog wheels. Oh, crap. So, I, this machine's got to have, like, maybe 500 miles on it. Maybe. Wow, this might have been okay. We're still going to throw it through the ultrasonic, so it's just one less thing to battle. But, uh, nope. This diaphragm right here is rock hard. So, the way this works is that there's this diaphragm pump right here on top of the motor which has a diaphragm that goes like this inside of it. And it is fed through this tube into this chamber, which has a similar diaphragm that goes like this and moves fuel through these two flappy valves right here and brings fuel into the carburetor. There's not really a bowl on these. They're very strange carburetors from what I'm used to seeing. They are essentially a little fuel pump here run off a of vacuum. So when these get hard, much like a power valve or anything else, they don't want to flex anymore and they won't move fuel very well or at all and they'll just crack and you'll have a bad day so oh yeah there's all the corrosion that's why we're going to be cleaning this thing and they're tore yeah this thing was absolutely rock hard after sitting for so long so we'll throw this in the ultrasonic get it cleaned up and get it back on the sled so i got the nuts loose on each side there it goes the shaft. That was the easiest shaft removal I have ever done in my life. Dude, I keep hearing you say that over and over. Are you going to be an Arctic Cat vintage sludge guy by the end of this? You know what? I might because Polaris, you got to get a heat gun. Like, you got to get a torch. You got to get and it's bad. This has been this yeah. has been so easy. You literally said, you're like, dude, we're going to need a day to do yeah. this. It's been like an hour and you're already halfway done. It's either Articat builds them way better or I'm just that good. I don't know. I think <laughs> I think Articat built them better. But wow, I might have to switch my hat out. I might have to switch my hat or out. Or just get a couple more of these and see if it's a consistent thing or if this is just that good of a sled for some reason. I've got our carbs stripped down to the bare essentials pretty much. A couple more things to pop off here. 
We're gonna start heating up some pine saw and the ultrasonic and throw her in there and get her cleaned up. Okay, so I found your high facts on Here, your tunnel. It. Yeah, good, thank you, sir. There is not a lot of wear on her. I mean, she's got... If any at all. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there is a little on her, but she's, she's pretty new. Dude, this thing has got like 500 miles on it. Yeah, look, this is paint. There's like surface rust, but usually old sleds, like this is just rusted out. I am, I am impressed. There it is. Drive shaft is out. Do you have any tech for us? Uh, are those called eccentric? I think it's, I'm not sure the exact name, but, but it's based on an eccentric. I don't know if you can see it here where it's a thinner, thinner wall there versus a thicker wall. Then there's the locking collar. And when you slide it on, it'll slide freely and you find where you need to set it. Then you tap this over that and that binds it. Then you lock your uh, set screw down and your bearing solid. Is there two, there are two non-concentric shapes on the outside <clears throat> there? So they, yeah, they, they twist up together. on each other. Okay. Cool. That's an interesting. I've never seen you that. You don't see that every day. I've never seen that before. Uh, anywho, I'm taking these wheelie boys off. Going pretty dang well. Yeah, so then I can put the cog. Come on. Come, come on. Come, come, there we go. So I can put the cog on Heather like that. Wow, that is a massive difference. Let's just for a second view the difference between the old one and the new one. <laughs> wow. They used to make them out of like a... Beeswax. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys haven't noticed, I'm absolutely out of my element with the snowmobile stuff. John, however, lives and breathes vintage snowmobiles. So if you are enjoying this content and you want to see more vintage snowmobiles, because I'm going to tell you right now, the two big channels that do it probably aren't going to do it nearly as often as this guy's going to go subscribe to his YouTube channel. I don't have the money for cars right now. Working on this is a lot better on my pocket because they're easier to work on and smaller. And you yeah, this is a great way to start with engines yeah. and stuff. So if you guys want to support this man and support his cause of reviving old snowmobiles and motorcycles and all sorts of small engine stuff, go subscribe to Golden Rust or Bust. Please and thank you. Right here on YouTube. Golden Rust or Bust, I'll put a link Right there, right now. Click that, subscribe. I would appreciate it. It would make me happy. <laughs> yeah, that's good enough. Two degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is Fahrenheit. It's close enough. Warm. Yes. Yeah, in, <laughs> in, in went to the moon units. It's got to be close to hot enough. So she's steaming. We got all our parts in there soaking for a good half hour, 45 minutes now. We're going to turn this on and stop filming for the next 20 minutes because of this. Ah, it's a dental drill. All right, so we have our carburetor out of the ultrasonic cleaner. It is totally clean. We have our carb kit. We're ready to rebuild this sucker. I want you to notice something. Uh, I'm gonna hold each of these in the same spots. This was the old pump diaphragm. And this is the new pump diaphragm. Notice the difference. <laughs> this would have never in its life ever again been able to move the tiniest amount of fuel. So obviously we're gonna replace all of that and get this thing buttoned back up. Well, if I remember how it goes back together. I'm putting all this together right now before John gets here. He uh, went to pick up a sled before coming over today. All right, I got the sled in the back there and she's not a beauty. I hope it falls out on the way home, to be honest with you. So yeah, he's on his way, he'll be here in a bit. This is pretty simple stuff. In fact, the kit I got came with some instructions if you guys need to do this on your own. You can follow those and you'll be good to go. Our seven layer carburetor cake is back together and it's time to throw the slides in it and do some initial settings and put her on the snowmobile and see if she runs. John's gone ahead and cleaned up our, I don't know, what do you call those rods that go across? Uh, the rods. The, the mounting. Mounting rods, mounting. The, I like it. <laughs> sure, <laughs> I have no idea. Whatever they are, they're cleaned up. He's gonna grease them and put them back in. And then over here, Angus is putting our air filter velocity stack thingy back on, and I'm bolting the carb onto the motor. 
Those high facts are pretty rough. Yeah, they're uh I'm sure they'll be fine. Put some uh silicone. Silicone or super glue. Su oh super glue I meant, it all like, together. I meant like glue. Oh! Snow does that. Oh okay, then we're good to go. Oh uh, yes, water. The perfect lubricant. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, our carb is on. John's gonna drop some tech on you guys about clutches that have been sitting for a long time. What I'm gonna do is I put grease on these rails where the uh, clutch pucks ride. So therefore it will, you know, have a little more lubricant and it won't mess up them clutch pucks. And then also on the inside, there's this uh, shaft there. I uh, usually spray lubricant on that as well so it doesn't bind up or anything. Just, you know, the more lube, the better. I think I'm gonna start calling people clutch pucks. Clutch pucks? <laughs> like, for some reason, I really enjoyed that term. You roundabout. <laughs> you pothole. <laughs> you listen black here, you, Listen here, you clutch pucks. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna, you know, when you, when you got a belt that's old, it frays, so then you just come by and suck those up to it and push her in. And you just rotate it through, and any time you see that, which I think that's the only one, uh, you do that too. Same with the track over here. All these frays, I just come by and clean them up. The smell of old burnt rubber. It smells like we just did a burnout with bias flies. <laughs> oh my god, it does. <laughs> So is there any particular reason to get rid of these sprays, or is it Cause, just... Because otherwise, if it like catches on anything or the snow clumps to it, then it can rip more thread out and... Uh-huh. Do that. It's screaming. Yeah, do that. It's just exciting. Maybe because it's, be it's on fire. Can't argue with that. I'd be screaming too if I was on fire. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see if this thing runs. John's got our bearings cleaned up. We had to replace one of them. Thankfully, we found one in town, miraculously, to slide on there. So, that's good. We're gonna slide this new track in, bolt everything up, and get this thing running better and take it for a rip. Dang it. Oh, oh, we lost more part of our IFX. Now, what I usually do is I lift up the front end and try to get them as close as I possibly can to put the bolt in the holes, and then I drop the ass end right where I need it to be, and then it should, in theory, in theory, it never usually happens, but the, the, the bolt holes will line up. Um, doing this by yourself, 
kind of difficult, I'm not going to lie. But uh, I have done them by myself before. You have to get up underneath the track and like push it in an area, like in a position, and then find something to hold it there while you put the bolts in. So uh, I think I'm going to attempt that now. set up a tripod? I'm thinking we could. <laughs> okay, because I'm like, we can do this by ourselves, but we don't need to, because we got two, four, we got four hands, two yep. each person, so. All right, we'll get this camera on a tripod real quick. So now that we got the, uh, the front part in, we didn't tighten them all the way up, because then, you know, pivoting and stuff. So now what we're going to do is we're going to drop the ass end and hopefully it will come down and will come into contact right where the holes are. Hopefully. Oh, oh, I got to go down just a tad. Okay, right there. Can you hold it there? Wow, that, I need a staples button because that was easy. God dang. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, that's good. I might as well just finish up the bottle. Nah, 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 you put too much in and then things are bound to go wrong. <laughs> I suppose that's that. Let's see if we can make this thing run with the shit. All right, we got our fuel system hooked up. The track is fully installed. We got oil in the chain case. The only thing left to do now is figure out if we can get this thing to run. We think the problem we had earlier was the fact that the fuel cell, Gatorade bottle, was still sealed. And it was building a vacuum and unable to pull fuel. So we're going to see if that magically fixes all of our issues. It's pulling fuel. at everything we actually have fuel in our line leading up to the carb so it's not a fuel supply issue it's a fuel pump issue and this has all new diaphragms so the only thing that could be a problem beyond that is this pump diaphragm up top which is probably absolutely junk because all these were literally obliterated and would have never worked in a million years so I think this diaphragm is bad we're gonna go ahead and pop this cover off and see what we can find inside and see if we can find something to replace it I'm sure this, this is going to be literally a potato chip inside of here I like potato chips. <laughs> I like those ones that look like a cheese flavor, like the ruffles. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, those the ruffles, good. sour cream, and cheese. Yes. Oh, so good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how bad it is. Well, I can hear it crunching. 
You can see the WD-40 is sprayed on it. Oh yeah, that's... Oh my... Oh, that's hell, hell, yeah. oh, well, besides that gigantic crack in the side. Well, there's our problem right there. There's a hole in this diaphragm, so that'll do her. Uh, what do we got for diaphragm materials, anyone? Anyone condom. got like, anyone wear condom? Condom. <laughs> I don't have one on me. <laughs> what about a balloon? No, the tear. Do you have any balloons? No. Balloons well, then that's a non-issue. What about... Oh, what latex about? glove. Oh, latex glove. I got some crazy rubber ones. Okay, that would work. Okay, that would work. I'll go get a glove. All right, bolt that sucker down. Let's go ride in the All snow. Right. Oh my god. Okay, we're just gonna try to shove these through. See if they take a thread and they'll they'll make their own whatever. There's one, kind of. I am ashamed to be a snowmobiler right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, Andrew, nice to meet you. Alright, um let's see if it works. <laughs> Yeah, I'd say that's still totally effective. Come on. Man. Are you still really leaned out from the last time? No, I reached you okay. really far. It's getting a little farther each time. I gotta go over here. Spinning through, I mean. Oh, I should probably not put my foot under there then. I didn't oh. realize that till now. Yeah, the track's uh, spinning through. for the final day of the Arctic Cat snowmobile revival with this Rotary 303. Now that the stores were open this morning, I went out and bought a roll of gasket material, and I'm in the process of cutting our new gasket right now. Not too much to this, just trace your gasket on there and start snipping away. A lot of people use a knife. I prefer a scissors or a dikes because it's just a thousand times easier to cut. So I'm going to get two of these made, we'll throw it all back together, and see if she runs. Alrighty, our new gaskets are in. We've got some fuel plumbed to this thing. Let's see if today is in any way a different story from yesterday. back off as I remembered seeing in these instructions something about this armature which I put the new one that came with it in instead of the old one 
needs to be flush with that surface, which the new one that was in there was not. So we'll uh, see if this makes a difference. I don't think it will, but hey, I can dream, right? Seems to be pulling fuel better. Like a lot better. Quite possible there's a bad seal in there. Who knows? One of the apex seals that is. supposed to sound like. Okay, nothing's changed essentially besides the fact that I took that velocity stack off so I can hopefully cover this better and see if we can eliminate the amount of air it gets thusly enriching the amount of fuel it gets because I'm tired of dealing with it and we're running out of options. So we're gonna throw some fuel at this again see if we can choke this off to make it go and hopefully burn the high effects off in three minutes and call it a video. And then it's for sale! Then it's for sale! For sale or sell. For sale for free. OBO. Further done. something wrong with this carburetor still. It's got three different seals before it even gets to the motor. Any one of those could be an issue. Well, you win some, you lose some. All right, Mr. Wacker. Are you ready to venture into the great outdoors in an attempt to ride a snowmobile that we know will not work? Yeah. Let's do it. Yay. And teleport. Ta-da. All right, well, let's set a reasonable goal. If we can make it, to there, I'm gonna say this is a win. Yeah, this thing has been fighting us so much, it's not, 
I, I've never had something fight me this much. Let's see if it'll move. I believe in you. We're just gonna put it on choke and not even sit on it because that's definitely not gonna move with us sitting on it. open hood ride. I'm just gonna open the choke. That's 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 tons. Okay, hopefully, hopefully it's still flooded. It just goes. It didn't. It rubbed really hard, you grabbed the belt and it just slipped. We've exceeded our expectations. We made it all the way over there. I bet if I ran right next to you and sprayed it, it would go. I bet so. You want to try it? So that's gonna do it for this video, Junkyard Digs, where we got this 1972 Arctic Cat Panther 303 with a sock rotary running and riding for the first time, and we don't know how long. I think we know why, though. Yeah, because it just socks. That I'm was... here all week. <laughs> Obviously, we are not exactly sled experts by any means. No. And we're definitely not familiar with rotaries, so I think we just bit off a little more than we could chew here. Yep. In way too short of time with no resources. So things turned out poorly. But this is where you guys are going to come in. If you want to see this sled again, and if you know anything about these specific motors and carburetors, and you think you know what might be wrong, leave a comment down below this video. We read all the comments, so we're going to see what you guys say. And if you want to see it again, we'll bring the Arctic Cat back for a second episode following your directions to see if we can make this thing run. Yay! Yay! It's such a cool sled that it really sucks that it just doesn't work for us. I know. It's so sexy. Like, look at that. Look at that. Leopard print. Not not just like the first seat. time I went to prom. That was what she wore. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. We'll see you guys next week right here on Junkyard Digs. Make sure you go check out my friend's channel, Wacker Garage, and of course, uh, Golden Rustler Bus, John's channel, who is not with us today, unfortunately. He helped out on this sled more than I did. He helped out on this sled more than I did. John built this sled. John built this sled, so it's John's fault. It doesn't run. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe to all of our other friends, Thunderhead 289, Junkyard Mook, Vice Grip Garage, Classic Mustangs 429, the Dylan McCool, the Boss Garage, Cars and Cameras. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. All the junk. I need snowmobiles.